All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? How is it going? I am Is There No One Else. And in today's video, uh, we're going to talk about what everybody else is talking about, which is the state of PvP. Um, I've watched a bunch of videos the last couple weeks. Nefes did a great video on the death of PvP. I agreed with just about everything that he said. I'll provide a link to all their videos in the description. Um, I watched some of Deltia's video that he came out with a couple days ago. Uh, Saman came out with a really good video yesterday. Uh, just talking about the differences between ESO and New World. And and yeah, he brought up some really good points. And so I talk about the state of PvP in this channel a lot. A lot of balanced discussion, talk about lag, talk about fixes and stuff like that. And and yeah, this video is gonna be a little bit different. Um I've been I've been reading a lot of the comment sections of of these videos and and I'm seeing uh, a recurring theme from quite a few different players and I wanted to I wanted to address those themes and so I uh, wanted to talk about those subjects that people keep bringing up in all these different videos uh, those subjects are uh, New World is just a fad everybody's gonna come back to ESO I, I don't think so guys um, as a content creator I talk to other content creators so uh, in this video I'll take you kind of behind the curtain and you guys can kind of see you know, not what I'm thinking, but what other people have talked to me about and what they're thinking. And you will see why New World is not a fad for a lot of ESO content creators and why I think they're they're probably gone for good. Um, also, uh, there's another argument that Zenimax doesn't quote unquote care about PvP does because it doesn't generate them money. It's always been a ridiculous statement. I will talk about that too. Uh, this this video is going to be long. We're we're gonna we're gonna go on a joyride of rants and ramblings, and and eventually we'll get to a conclusion, and we'll all be happy and we'll all agree with each other because that's what happens on the internet is everybody ends up agreeing with everybody because everybody listens to the whole video and they know that you wait for the whole video to you know get the whole point. Nobody has ever jumped to conclusions. So, yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So let's dive into it. Number one, ESO doesn't care about PvP. It's That's never been true. Um, it's always been a ridiculous statement. But I keep seeing it. I keep seeing it all the time. In 2014, when this game came out, they sold this game as an open world, large scale PVP game. That's how they sold this game. And yes, that was seven years ago. And yes, performance has gotten worse and worse. And yes, they haven't done many major upgrades to Cyrodiil. But the thing is, is I'm not gonna separate PVE and PVP like I normally do. Uh, if you're an end game player, we're just gonna say end game, max champion points, some gear, you've been playing for a while. I, in my opinion, if you're PvPing, you need a you need a craft bag. If you're doing trials, I think you need a craft bag. The amount um, of flowers you have to store to craft potions is just ridiculous in this game. And so, a craft bag, in my opinion, if you're playing regularly as an end game player, is pretty necessary. Uh, there's no way you'd be able to open up your mail if you were if you had that many flowers on your person, and like it just it just doesn't work. So, a craft bag is a necessity. So that's $15 a month. And you guys can do the math for a year. And also, you guys all know this because everybody talks about how this game's pay to win. But every new, just about every new chapter that has come out has introduced game breaking aspects to PvP. Every single, just about every single one. Somerset, we had time stop. Remember, remember time stop? <sighs> Shit was so broken. Uh, we had Warden and we had Necromancer, you know, the two most balanced classes in the games in the game that that have always been balanced. That's why they never get adjusted. Uh, Malakath Ring, uh, the only chapter that hasn't had like game breaking aspects to it is this last one. Uh, but Gaze of Sithis isn't bad. Well, I mean, it, it's not, this one hasn't been as bad as the other ones. But the thing is, is most new chapters have been so, such powerful gear that people get the new chapter. So they're spending the 40 to $50 for that. That's over $200 a year for PVPers to, if they're competing full to like PVPing and they want the stuff, they're spending $200 a year. And yeah, I mean, you could argue maybe, maybe PVE spends more money. I don't know if that's true because honestly, Cyrodiil, sometimes we joke about how it's mount simulator. Where else can you flex a mount more than Cyrodiil? One of the biggest flexes in housing is the throne. Like, if you get the throne, you want a house to put your throne in it because it's that badass. Um, 
So yeah, I I think PVPers spend money on this game just like anybody else does. But even if they don't, you're not turning down that money. And Zenimax knows this. Zenimax agrees with me, and I will explain why. About a year and a half ago, they sponsored Cypher to come back and play ESO. Uh, it was like two Januarys ago, a little over, yeah, but about a year and a half ago. Around that time, Fortnite was in its heyday. You know when Ninja was making over a million dollars a month on subscribers because Fortnite was so big? Uh, Cypher was one of the biggest, for, still is, I'm pretty sure. Well, I haven't paid attention, but he's one of the, he was one of the biggest and probably still is one of the biggest Fortnite streamers. And they were able to pull him away from Fortnite for a few days to stream ESO. I don't think you do that without paying him a ton of money. And Cypher isn't a housing guy. Cypher isn't a guy walking around picking flowers or or doing trials and dungeons cypher's a pvp -er. and they sponsored cypher to do this and so you don't spend money like that if you don't think you would get a bigger return and so yes they have done sponsorships like that for streamers to have people play their game because they know just like what we've talked about on this channel zenimax and an eso when it works is a very unique mmo it doesn't have the cooldowns like other uh mmos do and so it's a more action-packed fast-paced experience when it works and so they've kind of cut out a corner of the market they can pull traditional mmo players that that believe that mmos are a certain way and like it's this archetype and nothing else and they can also pull guys like shroud and cypher and uh, uh i forget the other guy damn it i i have a good point but well, whatever. But they can pull different people because the combat is so dynamic that people get interested in this game when it works. And so they know this, and that's why they're willing to pay money for those types of things. Also, last year, we did over a month and a half of Cyrodiil tests. Not all at the same, not all consecutively, but we did a two-week period, and then we had four weeks, four or five weeks, where they did Cyrodiil tests on PC. And that's a lot of money invested that into the developers because the developers spend hours going over those numbers, checking to see the server load, checking to see the server performance on different times of the day to see if these changes are impacting performance. That's a lot of time and time is money for a game invested into improving PVP. Now, some of you guys at this point are getting kind of angry and you're going to start typing furiously, but but. Let me finish this, this part of it. They care about PvP, and they care to invest in PvP at least somewhat because they know it's part of their cash cow. You're not going to turn down that. You're not going to invest that kind of money that they've invested if you don't think you could get some sort of return. And so that's not a company that doesn't care about PvP. That's a company that's trying to keep, at least keep the status quo. Now, I think we all know what the fix is. I think we all know that we need new servers. I think we all know that when the double AP event comes out and they do whatever they do, when I, I think they allocate more servers to Cyrodiil, when they add more Cyrodiil campaigns, all of a sudden performance is better. Like all of a sudden magically performance is better during the double AP event. Now it would be great if the double AP event was part of these performance tests and they could all of a sudden <laughs> compare the difference between the double AP event with way more people and all of a sudden it's not perfect. Obviously there's still lag and everything, but the double AP event works way better, way better than any other point in time in Cyrodiil. And we all know this. We all see this. Uh, streamers see this. Content creators see this. Longtime endgame players see this. We see all these things and then we see them work on multi-threading and we see them work on archive storage of characters that haven't been on for a long time and, and all these other things and you're like I mean none of these things are working this double AP event is working why don't we do this and they don't want to do that and so my contention is they do care about improving PvP to a certain extent they will expend this amount of money, but they don't want to go the full way. And they don't want to do the, the full change that probably needs to be done and has needed to be done for the last three or four years. And so when you look at this game, it came out in 2014. Seven years old. I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this video, you've been drive a car 
or you've been driving for a while, you know, you get at some point where your car just gets old enough to where you're like, you know what? This car is only worth two grand. Um, the next big fit, the big breakdown that happens, it's just, that's going to be the end of this car and I'm just going to have to get a new one. And you don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know how it's going to happen. You'll do the small fixes. You know, you'll get new tires. You'll you'll replace the brakes. You'll do the the normal maintenance things. But the minute a head gasket goes out, the minute something like that goes out, where all of a sudden the cost to repair is the same as the cost of of the vehicle, you're just like, you know what? This vehicle's dead. Time to get a new one. And so that's what it kind of feels like how the developers are treating this game. They're not treating this game as a game that they think has five years uh, more of life. They're treating this game like, hey, we're going to make money now while we can, and we're going to do some Band-Aid fixes and, and attempt to work this. And if it fixes it, cool. If it doesn't fix it, whatever. Like, We're just not sure where this is going to go. And so this isn't me saying I hate ESO, guys. Guys, I mean, look at my channel. I have like 700 videos talking about ESO PvP. Do you think I want to be talking about ESO this way? Well, I'm just being realistic, okay? So, like how I just like interrupted my conversation with nobody else talking to me there. <laughs> um, but, but my point is, is the writing has been on the wall for a while in this regard, where it's just, you know what? We're just going to do kind of what we can. We're going to do kind of what we can. We're just going to patch it up. And honestly, guys, it doesn't matter. Like, if you enjoy playing a video game, that's that's all that matters. That The core functionality doesn't matter. If you enjoy playing a game, then you just play the game, right? You, you don't have to be invested in You don't have to have this moral high ground based off of a company not trying to do right by the customers all the time. They, they, if you enjoy the game, you just play the game. Like, EA... I'm sorry, I'm going to shit on EA real quick. EA is a shit company. They have been rolling out shitty Maddens for years. And they keep making a ton of money off it. And people that play Madden know that EA is shit. They know it's shit. But they don't care because they enjoy the game. They enjoy the new game. And even though the 2021 Madden still had Madden 2020 in the background and some of the audiences on the, fo on the football fields, they don't care. Because it's, it's the new Madden, it's the new characters, and that's what they enjoy playing. So... There's a space here for players to enjoy the games that they enjoy and for game developing companies to get stinking rich and, and not really care about investing into the players. It's not really the best situation. And if something better came along, like if there was a better form of Madden that came out all of a sudden, I'm sure a lot of those players would would move somewhere else. And that's the cool part when you corner a market, when you have a very unique thing. Madden is very, very unique. Obviously, there's not there's not any other competitive football games out there. So they they've cornered the market there. ESO for a long time has cornered the market with the type of PvP that they have. And uh, this is where I'm going to pull back the curtain for you guys. But I talked to a lot of content creators. I was streaming on Twitch pretty regularly uh, over a year ago. And so as you guys know, Twitch streamers kind of become a community in each individual place where you try to help help each other in, in other ways and got to talking to a lot of them. I talked to a bunch of content creators on YouTube. Uh, I'm not going to name any names here. I'm not going to do some of that spicy, juicy drama that you want. But if you guys are one of those people and you've had those conversations with me, you could feel free to out yourself in the comment section below if you want. Uh, I will not do that in this video. Uh, just kind of want to share the general consensus of conversations that I've had. But this isn't the, everything that I've talked about right now isn't just a, a my thought sort of thing. That's what I believe. Um, but I'm not the only content creator that believes that there are plenty of Twitch streamers that I've talked to and content creators that I've talked to where when you read the patch notes and you see the fixes that are coming in, you just believe that they don't, that there, there is an end coming to this game there this they've said oh we we envision this game going five years into the future this isn't the actions of a development company that believes this game has five more years that that's not what this looks like like you know when you have that significant other and they say that they're not cheating on you but they're hiding their phone and they're locking their phone and they're going out at weird hours of the night and they're coming home and they're showering right away like I've never had that, but I've watched TV, you know, um, <laughs> like actions speak louder than words. And so a lot of times in situations like this, you don't listen to the developers. You don't listen to people. You, you look at their actions and the actions of ESO are, it looks like they, 
they're just going to take whatever they can and they're going to run this for as long as they can until it's no longer profitable and then they're going to move on. That's what it looks like. That's what I've been told by other content creators. That's what people kind of believe. And a lot of these content creators, guys, they want to make a career out of Twitch streaming or content creation for games. Like they want to do YouTube videos. They want to have websites. They want to do these sorts of things. And it's really hard to see a profitable point of view for a game they love if the developers aren't going to continue to improve and make the game better. Like if this game actually had five years of shelf life and they, the developers were working with the community and they were working on making vast improvements and, and putting this game in a direction, then yeah, you would see a lot of these players staying. But from my experience talking to them, a lot of them are looking for, have been looking for games for a while. I've been looking for a competitive alternative to ESO for a while. A new world is the closest one. Even two years ago, some content creators went back to WoW Classic because WoW Classic works. It is a functioning game. Now, the problem is, is WoW Classic doesn't have the same type of combat. I'm not saying it's worse or anything, but there, it's just a different form of combat. And so um, it's not the same. You know, like some people, like some people really, really, really like WoW, but it's not the same type of game. And, and that's more than fine. They're, they're different. New World is more like ESO than most people care to admit. There's open world PvP. If you watch some Christopher videos, he's already doing outnumbered 1vx. Uh, there, there's a lot of buzz going on around about New World for good, for good reason, because... They keep working to improve things. Uh, they pushed the roll the rollout of the game. They pushed it back a few times to make sure they got it right to work on combat and everything. And yeah, I I have quite a few people in my Discord that were very very excited about New World. And when they played the beta, they were still excited about New World. Um, a lot of my friends on PC, they're like, you know what? I'm gonna try New World. I'm not super excited about the combat, but it's free. It's the beta. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a go. Everybody that I've talked to that has tried New World has enjoyed it. And I know that the beta has turned a lot of people and they've gone, you know what? I didn't think I was going to enjoy this game. I do. I'm leaving ESO. I'm going to go play New World. And that's, that's where it's kind of going. You, when you have a competitive MMO that has, it's obviously not the same combat, but it's close, and it's close enough to pull a large portion of the PC community away from ESO. And so here's what you have. You have a new up and coming game that is adding more and more servers because so many people are very excited about New World. And you have a game that's seven years old where it's just like they're they're patching it up with duct tape and bubble gum and trying to put everything together. And you don't really know when the shoe is going to come off on that game. Which game would you choose as a content creator trying to make money and trying to make a living? I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty clear. Um, on top of that, there's just always been this disconnect, and and not not for me, guys. Okay, this isn't this isn't coming for me. Um, there's always been a disconnect with the developers and the player base in this game. There's always been. Uh, you look at ESO used to ZeniMax used to have. Um, well, they still do, but they used to have. Uh, not the stream team, but they used to have leads. They, they would have players that were, um, basically they were, they were like an extension of ZeniMax where they would, they would listen to Dragonite changes and Nightblade changes and they would bring that to ZeniMax and they were, they were basically like class, class uh, was it class leads? Is that what they called it? It's been a while. And I, and I know they still have some of those, but when that came out, some of the most passionate players for ESO, the players that were most interested, they, I mean, they were doing a free job. Um, a lot of them joined, like trying to think they were gonna help out the community. And a lot of them got burnt out and they stopped doing it because Zenimax just doesn't, like it was just a fake glorified position. Like, oh yeah, we listen to the players. And then you don't listen to the players. They, they didn't, they just did their own thing. And so you had you had these class leads talking about different issues with different classes and Zenimax is like, oh, we hear your point, but what about this? And it's just a complete 180 and they just, just there, there's no communication there at all. And, and yeah, it burnt a lot of like hardcore 
like die hard ESO players out. I was even asked at one point, I, I had somebody message me and they're like, Hey man, uh, there's, there's a, an opening for the PVP class lead, uh, or the PVP, uh, lead for players. He goes, I think I could get you into this if you want it. Do you want it? And I was like, I don't think they listen to players anyway. So it's just a glorified position. So no. And he goes, yeah, no, they don't, they don't really listen. I was like, then why are you asking me? Why are you asking me to do this? And so um, there's always been that disconnect. And so you, if you watch other, I'm not going to name names, but you you see people stream and you see people talk about how they, they're in conversation with the developers and they, there's just that disconnect. And the problem that you have with that is it's not that the developers need to listen 150% with what the community wants, but you should have a finger on the pulse of the community. You should be able to gauge what people like and what people don't like by having these conversations and you should try to work towards making these improvements. And a lot of games do that. A lot of successful games do those things. Like if you look at Fortnite, which we've already kind of talked about, they came out with new random skins because the players, the game wanted it. The players wanted it and they're like, sure, let's do fun. You guys want fun things? Here you go, here's fun things. And so that's what they do. If you look at New World, New World has been adjusting their balance. I, I know they had two different, they had like an alpha and a beta. They had like the combat from both was like vastly different. Uh, they had to add new servers because the population was so high in this last week. Um, they've, they've been working with the community to try and make them happy. And so when you see these things, when you see these actions of these other games working on these things and you see Zenimax just literally pulling teeth, I mean, we've talked about, just as an example, Stam Whip has been something that the community has wanted for four or five years. Like, it's, it's been, it's been a, a request basically since the game's inception. Like, hey, we have magmorphs of this. Why don't we get a stamina morph? And Zenimax has bent over backwards doing everything possible to not have stam whip and now finally you have a in this patch release you have a form of stam whip kind of because it scales off your weapon and spell damage but you still use magicka to use it and so it's not really stam whip is it like for five years this is what people have wanted and they finally caved like, yeah, you know, no, nobody really likes poop rock. So we'll just kind of do this instead. When you could have just come out with Stam Whip three years ago, like you could have just done that. <laughs> and that those are the type of teeth pulling. Uh, there was AOE caps. If you guys have been playing for a while, AOE caps was a huge discussion where if people were in larger than six person group, you just got diminished damage in that group for, for no real reason at all. And they fought tooth and nail for two or three years about AOE caps until finally um, they caved. And it's just, it's just stuff like that. It, and I don't have to bring up every single one, but you see this resistance. You see this resistance where it's like, not that the, the player community should get every single win, and I'm, and I'm not saying that, but the player community doesn't really get any wins. They don't really get any wins because the developers would rather do whatever they're going to do. And so you see that, and especially in PvP. This is especially more pronounced in PvP because the developers are really good with balancing PvE changes. They're really good with it. Um, they've balanced sets four or five, six different times now, so they've shown how good they are at balancing sets. Balancing and rebalancing and rebalancing and rebalancing. They're, they're really good at that. Um, and so they're able to get these sets working together in a parse to more or less balance out different classes. The problem is, is that doesn't work for PvP. And no matter what the, the developers say about PvP, they don't PvP regularly. They just don't. Um, if they did, they would know how ridiculous some of their changes are. And so when you don't know something, when you're not an expert in an area and, and on how that type of combat works, you shouldn't be bullheaded about changes in that area. You just shouldn't be. That's not how, that's not how good companies function. That's not how good leaders function. If you, if you don't know something, it's okay to not know the intricacies of how PvP works and how these sets can sometimes break PvP performance. It's okay. It's okay to not know those things. Like you wouldn't, you guys wouldn't want me balancing out 
uh, PVE for all of the classes. You wouldn't want to see that because I don't know enough. I, I'm not that type of person. And so <laughs> I would, but imagine if I, imagine if I, that was my job. And instead of listening to players that were smarter than me about it, I just said, you know what? How about this instead? How about a set? I know, I know Magic a Templar is behind in DPS. I don't know this, guys. I'm just providing an example. I know Magic Templar is behind in DPS. How about we provide a set that just balances it all out? So you, when you equip this set, it's now going to give you 30% more DPS on your sweeps. Does that work? And, and I introduced something like that. And now all of a sudden I've broken PvP because now you just have a ridiculous set for sweeps. Those types of things, that, that separation has been something that the PvE and PvP community has wanted for a long time. If you go and watch any of my videos, people talk about that separation for a very long time. And we've talked about it for a while, and it doesn't happen. And so when you see these things, and when you see, and when, from my point of view, when I've had conversations with other content creators about them, like, I wish there was a game like ESO that worked. I wish there was a game like ESO that worked. And then all of a sudden a game comes out that's kind of like ESO that works where the developers are actually listening to the community. It's no surprise that a bunch of people on PC are going over there. So yeah, the only way this changes, the only way this ship writes itself is if ZeniMax improves performance. If performance legitimately gets improved, I could see a big portion of the community coming back. I could. I know there's a lot of players that are burnt out and they're tired of dealing with ZeniMax, the company. Um, and so they won't come back because if New World functions, that's fine. Uh, but that's the only way they're going to get a portion of this player base back. They have to put up or shut up now. They've been working on performance for two years. 2020 was the performance year. And the best performance we've had in the last two years was before the performance updates were introduced. The game now is working worse than it ever has. After all two years of performance updates, the game is worse. And so they need to put up or shut up and make the game work. And maybe these a good chunk of these players will come back and they will make a profit off of that. But yeah, that's, that's really the only way I see this going. The only other way is if New World flops fantastically. And I don't, I don't see that happening, guys. I don't. It's, it's a big company, obviously. I mean, the owner of the company literally rides a penis to space. So uh, <laughs> there, there's a lot of money going on there, and they're willing to throw money at it to make a, a, make a good product. And listening to the player base and ad adjusting issues and, and trying to make a good game is going to is, is a corner of the market that doesn't really exist in a lot of video games. You have way too many cash cow games out, and eventually people will go to games where they feel like they're being listened to. And so, yeah. The only ways, in summation, ESO needs to improve performance or they're just going to lose more and more players to this game. And it's not that ESO is going to die, guys. There, there's, there's so many different aspects of ESO. There really is. ESO will probably, if this continues to happen, ESO on PC will just be a new player type of thing. They'll pull in the new players from uh, former Elder Scrolls players. So every time they come out with a new chapter, it's like, hey, come relive this aspect of ESO that you used to love five, six, seven years ago. We have a chapter for it. They're going to be able to pull in those players. But once you get to endgame, the game just doesn't work. And so I, don't, I think they're going to have a hard time with retention for those types of players, those players spending $200 a year. But they'll pull in the new players spending $50 a year. And maybe they'll buy a house and maybe they'll buy a mount. So, I mean... It's not going to die, but it, some aspects of it are, are going to be changed a little bit. Uh, console, different. There's no competitive MMO on console. ESO will be the thing until New World potentially comes to console. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, uh, hopefully this was informative for you guys. This isn't a video I want to do, guys. Like I, I've done over 700 videos on ESO. I would love to do another 700. But like I said, the writing's on the wall. It doesn't look like that's what's going on. We've talked about it quite a bit. Uh, and yeah, that's just kind of where we're at right now. That's my thoughts. I'm going to stop here. I want to hear yours. Please comment in the comment section below on your thoughts on this. Uh, we'll end it here.
thank you for watching guys have a nice day